Greetings and praise the Lord, virtual listeners. Thank you so much for tuning into our Bible study life class here at Bible Way Church of Washington, D.C. Please stay tuned to listen to a very amazing, phenomenal lesson given to you by our Bishop Ronald L. Demery Jr. Times, uh, we want you to know that God is with you and he is with us and you are in our prayers and in our thoughts on behalf of Lady Dimmer and I and the Bible Way family, I want you to be encouraged and want you to be strengthened. Where these are critical times, they're also creative times. And I believe that this is the time for the church to be creative uh, and use what God has given us, uh, the great minds and skills to glorify him in spite of what the world is going through. Uh, and tonight, uh, we're getting ready to get into the lesson, but I want to uh, start off with a word of prayer. Uh, if you would, bow your heads where you are uh, and close your eyes as we go to prayer. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given us to study your word. We know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We pray, Lord, that you would give us an anointing to teach, that somebody's life may be transformed through this broadcast and through this lesson. We pray right now, Lord, that your divine presence will be felt. Uh, even uh, by way of internet and uh, live stream, we pray right now, Lord, that you will be glorified, that somebody's life may be touched, that your word may bless us and we may grow thereby. We pray, Lord, that your blood will cover us and that your power would prevail. And Father, we pray for all of those across the world and across the country that are dealing, amen, with this COVID-19. Uh, we pray right now, Lord, that you would give strength and give encouragement Amen. To those that are going through, all of us, as we have to accept a new normal, we pray right now, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would lead and guide us, and that your presence will ever be felt in all of our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. All right, uh, we have a student's confession to study God's word, and uh, we're getting ready to do our student's confession to study God's word, and it reads thusly, we will diligently seek a faithful and loyal personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We only know as much about Jesus as we know about his word. We shall do the following with the help of the Lord. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Let us therefore not judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And let everybody say amen. Amen. God wants us fully equipped. Amen. He wants your heat working in the winter and he wants your AC working in the summer. Amen. He wants to make sure that you got power steering. I wish I could talk to somebody here. He wants to make sure, amen, that your windows are working. God wants us fully equipped. And the Bible says that he gave the ministry gifts and he gave some apostles, some prophets, uh, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? The perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry and that God wants to equip us to, amen, do his work and to do his will. All right. And tonight uh, we're going to go right into, amen, our lesson, uh, our lesson tonight. And I won't be very long. I uh, won't be very long at all. Uh, just for a few moments, we're going to talk about purpose. A lot of times we skirt around this issue of purpose and sometimes we probably be surprised at how many people live most of their lives not knowing what their purpose is. It was interesting, maybe a year or two ago, a young lady asked me, she said, listen, I just don't know what my purpose is. And I shared with her that your purpose starts with the one that created you. Understand that your purpose starts with God because when he created you, he created you with a purpose and for a purpose. 
All right. So I want to define, I like to define words and certainly I'm missing the saints that would normally be here for our interaction. So I got to interact with the staff tonight. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. I want to thank God. Let me take a moment. Let me, before I start this lesson, let me thank God first of all for uh, all of our uh, pastoral ministry, our team of pastors, uh, clergy, missionaries, our board of trustees, uh, all of our ministry leaders, I want to thank you so very much for all that you've done to carry the ministry forward during this most difficult time, your input. Uh, your prayers, everything, uh, it means so much. And we thank God for you. And we thank God for our staff, amen, here, amen, opening up the church, Minister Lifford, we thank God for you. Sister Tawana Chapman, amen, working the camera, amen, and Brother Whitson, amen, amen, on our soundboard. We thank you so much, amen, for your commitment, amen, to, amen, the work of the ministry, all right? So so let's talk about purpose for a minute. Now, I want to define, because I like to define words and i want you to just take a moment wherever you are uh, just take a minute i want you what how would you define purpose if you were to define purpose how would you define it all right so i'm gonna give you a minute and then amen i'm gonna do what i can to help you amen to understand what purpose is all right all right time is up all right purpose purpose is the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. All right? It's the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. All right? Now, let's go to Ecclesiastes 3, verse 9, down to verse number 14. I'm going to give you a minute to get that. That is Ecclesiastes uh, chapter number three, verse nine, down to verse number 14. You all just hold it a minute because I need to get it myself. All right, there it is. What profit have he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? Okay. Verse 10 says, I have seen the travail which God have given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He have made everything beautiful, good God Almighty, in his time. Understand that you are made beautiful in your time. Also, he have set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Verse 12 says, I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. All right. Your ability to enjoy your work depends to a large extent upon your attitude. Work becomes toil when you lose the sense of purpose God intended for it. We can enjoy work if we, number one, remember that God has given us work to do and has equipped us for a particular task. All right, that's number one. We can enjoy work, amen, if we remember that God has given us work to do and has equipped us for, understand that God has given you a work to do. Don't you think that God, amen, has you here just to sit on a Christian log and do nothing? God created you, he created you for a work. And he created you to do something. All right. So that's number one. Number two, realize that the fruit of our labor is a gift from God. OK, understand that the fruit of your labor is a gift of God. We should see our work as a way to serve God. OK, so whatever you do, understand and I want you to see that as a way to serve God, that when you're doing what you're doing, you're not serving man, but you're serving God. OK, who created you? Many translations say that God has set eternity in our hearts. This means that we can never be completely satisfied 
with earthly pleasures and pursuits. Because we are created in God's image, number one, we have a spiritual thirst. Number two, we have eternal values. All right? Number three, nothing but the eternal God can truly satisfy us. He has built in us a restless yearning, good God Almighty, for the kind of perfect world that can only be found in his perfect rule. I'm going to say that again. Nothing but eternal God can truly satisfy us. He has built in us a restless yearning, okay, for the kind of perfect world that can only be found in his perfect rule. All right? It is impossible. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this real good, okay? It is impossible to fulfill your God-given purpose unless you revere or fear God and give him first place in your life. Okay? Understand that you cannot fulfill your God-given purpose without him being first in your life. OK, unless you fear him and give him first place in your life. All right. Because a lot of times we're seeking things. But Matthew 633 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. OK, so God has to be first. We got to prioritize. The Bible is very clear as to what our purpose purpose in life should be. Men in both the Old and New Testaments sought for and discovered life's purpose. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, discovered that the fertility of life when it is lived only for this world. He gives these concluding remarks in the book of Ecclesiastes. He says, here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment. Including every hidden thing. Whether it be good or evil. According to Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Solomon says that life is all about honoring God. With our thoughts and lives. And thus keeping his commandments. For one day we will stand before him in judgment. Part of our purpose in life is to fear God and to obey him. All right. All right. I just read Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes must be understood in light of this concluding verse. Solomon began with a cynical appraisal of life as vanity, emptiness and meaningless. But he ends with serious counsel about where meaning can be found. Fear God, love for him and his word, and obedience to his commandments bring purpose and satisfaction that cannot be found any other way. Okay? It's not about us. There's a song. I know y'all know that song. Bishop Noah Jones Choir sang uh, some time ago. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Understand that life is not about you. But life is about Jesus. It's about God. Okay? The purpose for our lives is far greater than our own personal fulfillment. Peace of mind or even happiness. It is far greater than our family, career, our wildest dreams and ambitions. We are born by God's purpose and for God's purpose. Good God Almighty. Understand, amen, that focusing on ourselves will never reveal life's purpose. Sister Chapman, do you have that? I, I want y'all to read that. Focusing on ourselves will never reveal life's purpose. We must begin, first of all, with God, our creator. OK, we exist only because God wills that we exist. Good God Almighty. We are made by God and for God. And until we understand that life will never make sense. Good God Almighty. Listen, you cannot go to Kenmore and take them your refrigerator 
and ask them what's it for and they not have the ability to explain it to you because they created it and when they created it just like this microphone whoever this by <laughs> help me brother Tony. Sennheiser okay I cannot go to Sennheiser and take them this microphone and ask them to tell me its purpose and they not be able to do it because they created it and every piece that they made or invented it with serves a purpose so understand that what you were created for starts not with people and I think a lot of times we, 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 we fall into traps and, 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 and we get in, uh, we, we, we're misdirected because we're looking for people to explain to us our purpose. But your purpose starts with the creator. That's why you got to be careful who you allow into your inner circle because you don't want to become the victim of bad information. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody here. All right, let me move on because we only got a few minutes. Uh, our purpose begins with our creator, all right? Colossians 1 and 16 says, For by him were all things created. Understand that you were created by God. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created by him and for him. Understand that everything was created by God and for God. All right. We discover our identity and purpose through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. We discover our identity and purpose in who? In Jesus Christ. And what else? Oh, y'all wasn't listening. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ and what? That was it. Through our relationship with him. So understand that you will only understand your purpose with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? Now, uh, God was thinking of us long before we thought about him. His purpose for our lives predates our conception. Good God Almighty. I'm going to say it again. God was thinking of us long before we thought about him. His purpose for our lives predates our conception. Okay? God planned it before we existed without our input. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Jeremiah, real quick, Sister Juana, can, can, can you find that real quick? Jeremiah 1 and 5. Watch this very powerful, very powerful text here. Okay, very powerful, very powerful. Jeremiah 1 and 5, look at what God says to the prophet. All right, look at what God says to the prophet. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Okay, before Jeremiah's mother met his father, God said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I have set you apart for my service. And I know... We don't use that word much anymore, sanctification. But the word sanctified means to be set apart. Understand that we have been set apart for the service of the Lord. Then look at what he says. And I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Understand that you had a choice in a lot of things in your life. You had the choice of your spouse, your mate. You choose what college you went to. You choose what kind of car you drive. You chose the house that you live in. But one thing you did not get to determine, and that is your purpose. Because your purpose starts with God, <laughs> your creator. Okay? All right, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We are not an accident. Understand that you're not a slip up, an accident, or a mistake. God planned for you to be here. No matter how you got here, God is not surprised that you're here. He planned for you to be here. Knowing our purpose gives our life meaning. The greatest tragedy, good God Almighty, is not death. That's not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy is not death. 
but life without purpose. Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Knowing our purpose simplifies our life. Good God Almighty. I'm going to say it again. And you say it wherever you are. Knowing my purpose simplifies my life. Okay? Because when you know what you have been created for and you know what your purpose is in God, it simplifies your life. You'd be surprised at the people who spend their entire lives seeking affirmation, seeking affirmation from other people, trying to figure out what they're supposed to be doing because they don't know their purpose. But knowing your purpose, it simplifies your life. Okay? All right? <clears throat> it defines what you do and what you don't do. Good God Almighty. Because I know my purpose, it defines what I do and what I don't do. And that's why you got to know your purpose. Because sometimes you'll get tied into things that people are asking you to do when it's not your purpose. But when you know your purpose, you can't say yes to everything. Am I talking to somebody here? When you know your purpose, you don't fit in every circle. Oh, I'm trying to talk to somebody here. When you know your purpose, you can't hang out with everybody. When you know your purpose, you can't go to everybody's gathering. Huh? I'm almost done. So not only does purpose tell you what to do, purpose tells you what not to do. Okay? All right? Because I'm operating in my purpose. I'm not my own. I belong to God. Without a clear purpose, we have no foundation on which we base our decisions, allocate our time, or use our resources. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much. And I know this generation know what I'm talking about because that's one of y'all favorite sayings. You're doing too much. <laughs> huh? People who don't know their purpose try to do too much. And that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. Okay? So I want you to understand that. Knowing our purpose focuses our life. It concentrates our effort and energy on what's important. We become effective. Oh, my God. If y'all don't remember nothing else I say. Because not only do I want to live, not only want to do God's will, but I want to be effective at doing it. OK, so in order for you to be effective, you got to be selective. I feel like dancing on that one. Where's the organist? Hallelujah. Y'all got a shouting track over there. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. We become effective by being selective. OK, understand what your purpose is and what you have been called to. And I see this all the time in church. We have a lot of people who want to be in everything. You know, you want to be a part of everything. You're a part of this, you're a part of that. I mean, what, where is your focus? And when you're not where you're supposed to be, you will not be effective. Huh? Come on. I've got to be where I'm supposed to be. That's why I'm not in the choir. <laughs> Even though I think I can sing a little bit. Lady Demery don't think I can sing. <laughs> but I can sing a little bit. But that's, that's not my area. Are y'all hearing me? Come on. So you got to be selective. You, and I'm going to say this again. I said this earlier. You cannot say yes to everything. Know where you're supposed to be. Okay? Because God is only going to anoint you where he sends you. Good God Almighty. Huh? So you become effective by being selective. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay? Knowing... Our purpose motivates our life. Somebody say that. Knowing my purpose motivates my life. Okay? And again, let's go back over what purpose is. The reason for one's existence. Okay? All right? So knowing your purpose motivates your life. Because when you know your purpose, huh? Listen to this. Purpose always 
produces passion. Huh? Purpose always produces passion. All right? And what is passion? Not everybody all at once. I'm going to give you all a few minutes. Don't, 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 don't. What is it? Passion is a strong desire for something. So when you're operating in your purpose, you have a desire to do it. A strong desire to do it because it's your purpose. All right. All right. Now, uh, now, according to God's will, let me let me clarify that. Let me make sure I say that right. OK. Knowing our purpose prepares us for eternity. OK. All right. I'm almost done. Another part of our purpose is to see life on this earth in perspective. OK. Unlike those who focus is on this life, King David looked for his satisfaction in the time to come. He said, and I in righteousness, I will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness, according to Psalm 17 and 15. To David, full satisfaction would come on the day when he awake in the next life. Beholding God's faith, fellowship with him, and being like him, according to 1 John 3 and 2. Let's look at 1 John 3 and 2. Do you have that verse, Sister Tawana? All right. Beloved, now are we the what? Sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him as he is. Thank you. All right. Now listen, in your spare time, I want you to look at Psalm 73. And Psalm 73 is a psalm of Asaph. And what I love about the psalms is that when you want to hear the truth, you can run right down to the Psalms because in the Psalms probably every human emotion is covered in the Psalms and ASAP he starts off in Psalm 71 and he says my foot was well not gone <laughs> in other words he's saying that my foot almost slipped good God Almighty uh, he's honest you know he's realizing that he didn't cross every T and he didn't dot every I and, you know, we always thank God for what happened. Oh, I thank God, you know, that he did this. And we should thank God for what he's done. But I don't know about you, but I'm one of those individuals. I thank God for what didn't happen. <laughs> my foot almost slipped. <laughs> oh, my. And so in Psalm 73, Asap, he, he talks about, Asap talks about how he was tempted to envy the wicked. Who seemed to have no cares. And built their fortunes upon the backs of those they took advantage of. But then when he considered their ultimate end. And what you have to understand, beloved saints of God, is you got to understand your ultimate end. All right. In contrast to what they sought after, he states in verse 25, what mattered to him. Whom have I in heaven but you? Good God Almighty. And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Verse 25, all right? To Asaph, a relationship with God mattered above all else in life. Without, without that relationship, life has no real purpose. Can you imagine what your life would be without Christ in your life? Oh my God, there's a, there's a song that says, without him, I would be nothing. And without him, I would fail. And without him, I'd be like a ship without a sail. The Apostle Paul talked about all he had achieved religiously before being confronted by the risen Christ. And he concluded that all of it was like a pile of manure compared to the excellence of knowing God. 
of knowing Christ Jesus. In Philippians 3, verse 9 and 10, Paul says he wants nothing more than to know Christ and be found in him, to have his righteousness and to live by faith in him. Even if it meant suffering and dying, Paul's purpose was knowing Christ, having righteousness obtained through faith in him and living in fellowship with him. Even when that brought suffering, according to 2 Timothy 3 and 12, ultimately, he looked for the time when he would be a part of the resurrection from the dead. Our purpose in life as God originally created man is number one, to glorify God and enjoy fellowship with him. Number two, have good relationships with others. Oh my. Have good relationships with others. Do you know that God perfects us through relationships? And, and what I want to talk about, I want to talk about if you have a relationship with God and you have an ongoing relationship with God and you're in communion with him, how can you not love what he created? Oh my, I'm talking to somebody, you, right there, mm -hmm. with that cup in your hand, right? You, right there, yeah, yeah. Huh? How can we, that say we love God and have a relationship with him, not love others? Because what God does, he perfects us through relationships. <laughs> okay? All right? And understand that your purpose is bigger than you. That whatever God has purpose to do, you can't do it by yourself. You need to do it with others. So then you have to have a relationship with others. All right? All right? Let me get ready to quit. Let me get ready to close. So number two, he wants us to have relationships with others. Number three, God wants us to work. I'm talking about something you love God and you ain't doing nothing. Come on, notice that when Jesus called the disciples, they were already doing something. Huh? And number four, he wants you to have dominion over the earth. But with man's fall into sin, fellowship with God was broken. All right? Relationships with others are strained. Work seems to always be frustrating. And man struggles to maintain any semblance of dominion over nature. Only by restoring fellowship with God through faith in Jesus Christ can purpose in life be rediscovered. Good God Almighty. All right. You hear that? Only by restoring fellowship with God through faith in Jesus Christ can purpose in life be rediscovered. The purpose of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. We glorify God and we glorify God by fearing and obeying him, keeping our eyes on our future home in heaven and knowing him intimately. We enjoy God by following his purpose for our lives which enables us to experience true and lasting joy, the abundant life that he desires for us. Amen. And that is the word of the Lord. I pray that you got something out of this lesson. It is our prayer. Amen. On behalf of Lady Dimery and I and the Bible Way Church family, it is our prayer. Amen. That you would operate in your purpose. Amen. Whatever your purpose is, you will never find out your purpose without God. And there may be somebody that's watching tonight. You may not know what your purpose is. Your purpose starts with your creator. Amen. Go to God. Ask him, what is my purpose? Amen. Ask him. Before you got here, God had created you with a purpose. Because God just doesn't do anything just for the sake of doing it. God does everything intentionally and with a purpose. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children to the good pleasure of his own will. Understand that God, before he created anything, he already had you in mind. And he created you with a purpose and for a purpose. And God wants to use you for his glory. And in order for you to understand what your purpose is, first of all, you got to get connected to God. Understand that when God created man, man was created in the image and likeness of God. But when man sinned, the image of God in man was ruined. And the image of God in man can only be rediscovered, as I said earlier, is through Jesus Christ. He is the way. And if you don't know him today, look, you need to get to know him. We're going to pray for you. It is our prayer that you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. Amen. That you will repent of your sins. Amen. That God would baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he will fill you with his spirit. Amen. Fill you with his spirit. God is still saving. He's still restoring lives. He's still a mighty God. He loves you and we do too. And until next time, know that we're praying for you. I want you to bow your heads in a moment of prayer. Amen. In the name of the Lord, I want you to bow your heads in a moment of prayer as we get ready to approach the throne of grace. Hebrews says that we can, amen, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson on purpose. We pray, Lord, that your people, even in this uh, pandemic, even in this critical time in the world, we pray right now, Lord, that your purpose in them will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. And that their life will have meaning, that they will be used for your glory, that they will touch lives, that lives may be transformed. We pray right now, Lord, that you would bless us, keep us, and strengthen us until we meet again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. And we thank you for joining Bible Way Church's Bible study life class. If you would like to sow into this local assembly, you can do so by giving two ways. You can give via Give La Fly and you must type in Bible Way Church of Washington, D.C. Or you can send your checks in. Make sure that it's payable to Bible Way Church. Here, the address is 1100 New Jersey Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., 20001. Thank you so much for joining us today.